So I've got a problem with this reversing camera. As you can see, it's flickering like crazy. So I'm not quite sure whether it's the screen or whether it's the camera itself which is causing this. This is a 24 volt system, not a 12 volt system. So I'm not quite sure how that's handled. I can't remember if I actually had a step down unit for this. I'll, I can't remember. It's like seven years ago, I think, when I installed all this stuff. I need to fix this. I'm going to pull this out. We'll refurbish the screen. See if that fixes it. If it doesn't, then I'll refurbish the camera. Oh, it's going to be a bit noisy. I'll just do some testing on this. I'll measure the voltage coming in here. And it's 18 volts, strangely. It must be a bit dropped in those wires. And I measured on this empty capacitor position just here. That's measured 5.2 volts. And there's a 3.3 volt just down there, and connector, that's measuring 3.6. So, I think the fact that it's 18 volts doesn't really matter because it's being dropped down anyway by the buck inverter. So, I don't think it's a power supply problem. So here is the actual camera which is in the back of the bus. So this is the actual reversing camera. Now I've noticed a few things here. Normally there's actually like another circuit board which sits in front of this which has got a whole bunch of LEDs on it for doing infrared illumination. So you can see where you're going when you're going backwards. They have a crystal here which isn't actually secured down. I'm really surprised by that. It's just flopping around a bit. I would have thought that's not a good thing to do on a mobile installation. Anyway, that'll be sorted out. Now on the back here, there's actually some corrosion and stuff. So I do have issues with moisture inside this camera. I actually did pull it apart and put another silica gel pack in there and dried it all out. You know, I left it open to the air for a few hours and put a silica gel pack in it and resealed it all and put it back together. But there's some corrosion signs on this chip here. So I think maybe the corrosion is what's going on. Maybe it's shorting out those pins. The other interesting thing is it's marked as 12 volts here. Now this is a 24 volt system. So I just went and checked the input power here, I'm getting 22 volts coming in. So that's potentially concerning. It does come through a diode, it's got a smoothing cap and it's got a voltage regulator, presumably here. And it's got another smoothing cap there, so I'm guessing it's dropping down anyway to some voltage, I don't know, it's 5 volts or 3.3 volts or something, who knows. So I think I'll deal with the corrosion first, clean it up. And if you look on the very back here, the actual connector here, the pins here aren't looking the best either, looking a little bit dull and stuff, so looking a bit dodgy so so I'm going to clean up the corrosion and stuff like that then we'll repower it after I've done that cleaning up and I'll test it here on my bench with a power supply I've got my tester here which I can use for testing video signals this couldn't get a signal at the front of the bus but at the time this had tripped out completely so this is giving no signal out so I believe this is why I couldn't get a signal at the front of the bus was because this was not sending anything out because it dies pretty quickly so anyway we'll clean this up first and we'll go from there. So I'm actually going to take this chip off so I'm clean underneath it because I think the corrosion is underneath the chip and I could just wash it with IPA and maybe heat it a little bit and just try and get a little bit of flux under it. I'm actually going to take the chip off because it's only an 8-pin chip, hot air should hit it pretty quickly. I don't want to get it too hot because it is an image sensor on the other side of the board so I've got to be a little bit careful about how I do this. So I do need to heat it and probably put some fresh solder on the pins with my soldering iron, some leaded stuff and then I'll take it off and clean it up and put it back on again. Best way to do it, I think. Alright, so I've put some solder on there. I've just got this heat shield here because I want to try and protect this connector here. I don't want to damage that. So let's put the heat shield across there to try and stop heat getting to that connector. Which way does the chip go? I should make, make a note of that too, shouldn't I? There's a logo up here, this top right hand corner just there. up the chip a little bit. You won't be able to see this I don't think but uh, I should be doing it. Just clean these pins off with the soldering iron. We'll wash it in a second. I just want to make sure it's got no corrosion left on there you know and the flux is out a chance to do something. We finally got a hole in it or something. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put some fresh solder on these pads up here. I've already given it a clean, obviously, but I'm put some fresh stuff on there, put the good stuff on, and I'll put the chip back on again with hot air, bed that down again, and then I'll maybe look at some other stuff. But that chip was the one that's got the obvious corrosion on. Nothing else seems particularly obvious, but I might just go around and just warm it all up a little bit with hot air whilst the board's warm, with a bit of extra flux, and then clean it all off afterwards. 
just in case there is something floating around somewhere. But there's nothing too obvious, apart from what that was on that chip, which could be all it was. So I've got the hot air set at uh, 350. And this just flux over the ball. Let's close the chip down. Ships just moved into place. Okay, let's just reflow a bunch of stuff too. Got some happy on it. So, the camera is working at 13 volts input. It's got a voltage regulator here, it's dropping down to 5 volts. So, it's quite a big ask for it actually. It's actually running really hot as well. So, that's quite concerning. Um, but as you can see, it's actually working fine on the video camera here. But it's drawing 100 milliamps at 13 volts. So, I'm going to wind the voltage up to be more like what it's getting from the vehicle. And there we go, see it's flicking around now. Now it's giving trouble. Right, so I think there's a voltage regulator issue, potentially. So if I go down to 6 volts, that's working. Yeah, 9 volts, 10. It isn't liking high voltage. I'm wondering if the power supply is bad. I don't remember how I installed this. I don't know if there's a voltage converter in the vehicle or not. I really don't remember. I don't know if there's like a, a 24 volt to 12 volt converter inside the vehicle which is supposed to be driving 12 volts to this camera system. 12 volts is working absolutely fine, like 6 volts is good too. But obviously 24 volts is bad. I mean even this is this doing where it's off coming about there. So 20 yeah. 21 volts is where it starts playing up. And I'm getting 22 volts on the bus. Might mean the main power supply has got a problem. If there was a main power supply, that is. So I think I managed to track down the problem. It wasn't the monitor, it wasn't the camera, it was the 24 volt converter. 
oh, I find it and the first thing is, oh, there's a hole in it. That's not right. Because, you know, 18 volts and stuff I see on the other end. It's like, that's weird. It's like, it doesn't seem right. I'm thinking it was voltage drop, but no, no, it's this converter here, which has absolutely fried itself. The Chinex capacitor has exploded. A couple of inductors on there, but um, it's pretty fried. It's also been getting really hot because the nut has melted itself for the case. That probably says to me that it's shorted out. That'd be the cause. That's why it's not working right, and that's why the camera didn't like above 21 volts because it's not supposed to be running on that. It's supposed to be running on 12 volts because this converter here is supposed to be dropping it down. And I also got the 18 volts at the front screen as well, which probably wasn't good for it either. This I need replacing. I've got this back converter here. This will probably run it. Might fit in the case though. So I'm going to have to come up with some other solution for that. But, uh, Oh well, stuff happens. Yep, XL2576S. Yeah, that's. I think it had heat shrink over that coil, actually. Is it heat shrink over there? So, yes, yeah, we're getting really hot because it's probably short out. I think replacing the capacitor, <laughs> or capacitors, isn't going to do the job. I think it's probably completely shorted out. I wonder if we can determine that. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're interested in these videos. Getting 0.9 volt drop across that way and this way. Open. So it's not actually a dead short. Let's check this diode over here. I wonder if I should just try replacing the caps and test it on the bench to see if it comes back to life. Get this charge up cap. Yeah, charging cap also got a drop, so the diode seems alright. The core has also got really hot. It looks like it was covered in something which is all just disintegrated and fallen off. I reckon I'll take the cap off, replace it. I reckon I'll just try recapping it and see if I can power it up, see if it comes back to life. That cap's bad as well. So those two caps are bad. So that's 10 microfarad, is it? 100 microfarad? I can't quite see what it was. Why has the core got hot? It's the only question I've really got. I mean, I understand the caps, but. Well, let's try and repair it, see if I can fix it rather than replace it with this. Because I've got a nice box to put it in. Let's do that. Right, I've put the caps in. I'm just about to power it up. I'm going to reduce the current on this thing in case it's going to go bang in front of me. 100 milliamps. That should be enough to at least power it. And I'll see if there's any output on my multimeter here. I've got it hooked up, so 12 volts coming in right now. And I'll measure the output in a second. Right, let's turn the power on. Okay. That's doing 15 milliamps. We're getting 11 volts out. Let's put the voltage up. Let's do 24 volts. That's going straight through. No, nah, something's wrong there. That's going straight through. Getting 24 volts on the output. 22 volts on the output. No current to speak of. So yeah, there's definitely a short on this board. So oh well, I guess that part there is gone. Damn. So I've got this bucket regulator here set up now. I've adjusted this as one of the adjustable ones. I've set it to 11.5 volts to reduce the stress on the camera regulator because the regulator on the camera was running quite hot at 12 volts. So only 11.5. That also allows the voltage drop down the cable to the front of the bus, which has the 5.2 volt regulator in there as well. So it's allowing voltage drop. For, I think it's getting about three volts drop there. So it gives me about eight volts. Gives me a couple of volts headroom, which should be fine. I'm going to set it there. I would like to go lower, but I don't think I can go much worse than that, otherwise it might affect the uh, screen at the front. Now I've got to try and do something with this to make it suitable. Oh well. Right, let's test this again. Did the replacement power supply do the trick? Yes it did. Yep, that's working fine. So the replacement power supply did the trick, it's all working right now. I've got the wrong resolution on this mode, there we go, should be that big. It's all good. It's fixed. That was fun. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.